everyone! Welcome to the Jada Institute Show. On today's show, we're going to be doing some project journaling. We're going to be doing an update to the project journal that involves this little daisy tutorial we did years ago. We wound up using this motif quite a lot here on the channel, and I've even used it for a bunch of personal projects too. So today's entry rotates around kind of all the different ways you can use a little motif. So that is one thing we're going to do. And since March is spring, that meant that I got to turn the page into the spring section of our seasonal project planner. So I'm going to walk you through that too. A little bit of decorating. So we need our project journals. We need our journal kit supplies. We can head on over to the craft table and we will put together a project journal kit entry together. So the first thing I'm doing today is I'm actually helping to organize my project journal a little bit better. Um, I like to plan out my month. So we've got sort of a seasonal project planner kit in our Etsy shop. It has all of the different seasons in the year, so winter, spring, summer, and fall, and each one um, is broken down into three months, and each season actually has a little um, applique sized crochet pattern to go along with it. Um, and it's a cute little pink flower actually for the spring. But I've noticed in March that I couldn't get enough of daisies. So daisies really became the focal point of this month for me. And as I was filling out all of the sort of things I wanted to do in that month, I recognized that I had a lot of daisy projects. So I wanted to create a journal entry on the daisy projects. I also want to do one on my granny square poncho and every month we add to our mighty mile a minute calendar blanket project. Um, so this is a stitch guide thing which I just want to show you quickly. I keep all the stitch guides for my calendar blanket projects in their own little booklet. So this is like an auxiliary guide um, to my regular project journal. This is how I keep all of the paperwork, the patterns, the descriptions, designs, stuff like that. I keep them all together in a single journal because calendar blanker projects are really big um, and of course we put a lot of work into them so I always like to have all of that in its own little book. So this is just me updating my little mini project journal for my calendar blanket this year. So that's a check mark. Um, I also like to make note of the photographs I want to take, any of the tutorials we want to do, and patterns that I want to work on. I've always got a lot of handwritten notes and stuff and putting them in together, putting them sort of down into pattern form is uh, something that can fall by the wayside. So I'm really trying to organize myself a little bit better. And this is going to go into my project journal. I'm keeping all of my information in one place so I don't have it scattered. And by kind of snapshotting the month as I go, it's really gonna help me keep organized. And of course, I love to decorate. So I'm making a little bit of a, sort of a spring, <laughs> it's a spring um, title page and I'm going to add sort of the months to it. So I've just sort of started with a little title at the top, spring, there's my little contribution from March because I can't get enough daisies. And then I'll have something from April and May as the months come. And this is just gonna be one little thing in my project journal. They're gonna sit back to back. And because I feel like the actual spring information should be first, that's the side that's going to sit facing out when I flip to it inside my project journal. There. So, seasonal planner for spring updated and ready to add to my journal. The next thing I wanted to do was highlight all of the daisy projects I've been doing. So sometimes if it's a big project, it gets its own journal entry. But in this case, because I've used this daisy for so many things, we've added it to a dishcloth pattern, um, I've, add, I've turned some into jewelry, we've made a garland out of it, I've used them as appliques on a whole bunch of different little projects, and now of course I've even made a super small one um, to give myself a new piece of jewelry, so I made a pendant out of that little daisy pattern. Um, and I've done so many things that it real I realized I really need to just sort of keep it all in one journal entry as opposed to having six or seven different entries because it's really just the same pattern I'm using over and over and over again. So I made myself a cute little title page as I love to do.
miniature sticker sized versions of that little daisy and I used a small hook so I'm going to just pop over here to my notes page. This is where I've kept notes on all the different projects and in this case this notes page is really really handy for a lot more than just keeping track of a single project. Because I, this is an ongoing thing, I'm always using that daisy pattern, I keep adding notes to it as I go. So I've made notes of the different kinds of yarns I've used, so a thread size 10, uh, a size 4 and a size 2 regular weight yarn. Um, I've kept, it's about 10 yards every time I make a daisy, so some of this information is going to be the same no matter what fiber I'm using or what yarn I'm using, um, depending on the project. It's going to be very little yarn, so it's kind of nice just to sort of have an eyeball. Um, if I want to go <laughs> make daisies down the road, um, if I want to make a whole bunch, I have sort of, I've written it down, so I don't have to redo the daisy and figure it out every single time I want to use the pattern. Um, other little things, I made notes of some of the hooks I've used, so the 1.5 millimeter is for the super small one, um, that's this little guy here, the pendant um, that I'm wearing on my necklace, and the 4.5 millimeter is the hook I use for the larger squares, so for example, um, the one you saw on the garland, the one on the spring thing, and also I used a 4.5 millimeter hook on this little daisy applique, that I put on my halter top. Now I used two strands of crochet thread size 10 held together and a four and a half millimeter hook to make that little applique. I really like the way the size came out. Um, I like how the stitches look. It was easy to manipulate because thread is small so holding two strands together isn't difficult and of course a four and a half millimeter hook is a nice average size so that was really easy to make. I like the feel of it. Um, so that makes a really good applique. So I made a point of making a note of that. Um, all the different projects I've used so far, if everything sort of stood out about it, I made a note. Um, washing and care instructions, I mostly use cotton when I'm making daisies uh, because a lot of the time they end up being like a little applique. So for the most part it's cotton and I just generally hand wash all my stuff anyhow. Uh, I made this little guy. This was an experiment. And of course I made note of that down here. <laughs> this is two strands of crochet thread size 10 held together, but I used a 2.75 millimeter hook. So same threads held together as the one on my halter top, but a smaller hook. And you can sort of see the size difference there. And I think that's also an important note to make when you're keeping notes on projects. The size of the hook you use can really vary up the shape and the size of the daisy or the applique you're making. And instead of just doing eight petals, I used the false stitch on my cinched up circle and I made a ninth petal. And I wanted to sort of see if I liked the look of that versus the eight that I usually do. So these little guys are eight petals. This one's nine. Nine does look a little fuller and um, that's what I did on my halter top too. So I made a note about using the false stitch for an extra petal. Um, I've made a little scrap of uh, the different sort of threads I've used, so down the road I know okay that's the thread 10 that I was using, I can feel it, so if I'm in another place and the gauges are different or the kinds of yarns being sold, maybe they've completely changed the measurements down the road, they do that, um, I'll be able to refer back to this and go oh okay that's the size I'm looking for, or that's the size I'm looking for. Pretty important. I have one pad um, ball of yarn label to add to the back. Um, that was some cotton that I used to make a couple of uh, daisies, so I wanted to make a note of that because that's a size 2 and it uh, size 2 yarn also made nice daisies. It's the thing about this pattern, it pretty much works with any fiber, any size hook, any size yarn, um, and every time I make one I try to make a note about it. And of course I've got my little pattern. I included some of my photos for my own reference so I knew uh, which are the, some of the projects that I'd done with it. And then all I have to do is put the whole thing together. So I know I put the pattern in the middle, I put my notes so that my notes are showing on the back, and the whole thing is sort of set off by that cute little title page I made myself. And I like my title page to sit up first. And there, there's my title page. I know that my pattern for the actual applique is in the center and for quick reference there's all of my notes on the back and the whole thing is tucked away nice and neatly in one little plastic insert package. 
fresh as a daisy. This says spring all over it, which is perfect because I've gotten into the spring project planner part of my seasonal planner. Nice and organized, lots of fun too. It's kind of like housekeeping if housekeeping was actually fun and involved a lot of creativity and like crafting. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed journaling along with us this week and we'll see you soon here on the Jada and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, have a great week. Bye. Hi everybody, Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.